Hi, my name is Daniel. This story starts in June 2020 when I saw an Instagram post by a local dog adoption agency. They asked if anyone in our neighborhood was available to foster a dog. With my partner working from home and my own office within walking distance, we thought it was a perfect time. We both love dogs and wanted to adopt one someday. And what better way to buy this isolated time than take a couple weeks and make a dog's life a little easier. A few days later, we met Donnie. I came home from work that day and he was in the corner of the bedroom. He wouldn't move, didn't make a sound, didn't even respond to any verbal cues. He was just there. Every once in a while, he would get up, wander a few steps, and then run right back to his corner. Inside, he was immovable, like a rock, and we literally had to carry him outside to take him out. Outside, he would dart everywhere erratically at almost any sound or movement, sometimes even onto the street. At times, it was terrifying. During this time, his adoptive family came about once a day or so to take him for walks so that he could get to know them. And then about a week and a half later, we said goodbye as he went to what was supposed to be his permanent home. Donnie was a foster dog and we knew that this arrangement was temporary. We were both so surprised when he went away that we could feel such a hole in our lives, such heartbreak after saying goodbye to a dog that we only knew for a short time, who wasn't affectionate or obedient, who would just lay around in the same spot all day and either ignore us or be terrified of us. It ultimately turned out that Donnie was not a fit for this adoptive family, so they decided not to continue after their trial adoption period. So when we got the call from the agency asking if we would foster him again, we said that we wanted to keep him. Donnie came back a few days later, and he's been with us ever since. Today, Donnie is still an anxious dog, but completely different than when we first met him. He spends most of his days napping, uh, but does get more playful in the evening. In many ways, he embodies pandemic life. All he wants to do is sleep all day, never wants to leave the apartment. When he does go outside, he gets very nervous when somebody gets too close. He doesn't like areas with lots of people. Donnie is not the dog I imagined we would have. He doesn't come running when I get home, wagging his tail and looking all happy. The only running he does is away from me. He doesn't do tricks. Many times he won't even take treats from my hand. With a dog like Donnie, it's the small things that suddenly become so precious. Sometimes I'll be reading on the couch next to him and he'll just move around a little bit so that he can rest his head on my leg. Or maybe I'll be working at the table and feel a cold, wet nose gently poke my arm. It's these little things that mean so much coming from a dog who is so afraid of everyone around him. Just as Donnie is not the dog I expected, 2020 was not the year that I or anyone expected, but it's through him that I learned how to see the little things as special. Right now, it could be running into a friend that we haven't seen. Eventually, it could be a handshake or a hug. At some point, it will mean seeing my family in Alberta. All of these things will have such different meaning when we can do them safely again. It will be so profound and special. This pandemic has transformed my idea of what makes a happy life. Maybe it's not always a dog that runs up to you and excited and wagging his tail, these generic types of scenic moments that often come to mind when we think of happiness. I think there's more to it than that. I'm still learning what that means, and Donnie teaches me a little bit every day. Thank you for listening. From me, my partner Max, and of course Donnie, take care, and we wish you all the best.